Okay, hi there. Welcome to a video where we're going to take a look for a few minutes at the Keynesian Aggregate Supply Curve. So what is it? What is the Keynesian Aggregate Supply Curve? Well, basically it's a non-linear supply curve where the elasticity of aggregate supply is dependent in part on how much spare productive capacity a country has at different stages of an economic cycle. So here we go. Let's have a look at how we draw the curve. Uh, crucially, a significant minority of students tend to use incorrect labelling on their diagrams, so please remember to label your ADAS diagrams with the general price level, or GPL, on the y-axis, rather than simply price as in micro, and with real GDP, or real national output, on the x-axis, rather than just simply quantity, as in micro. Uh, by the way, we tend to use the letter Y for income as our shorthand label on the x-axis, rather than quantity. So, when an economy has a high level of spare capacity, as shown here, then we would draw the uh, Keynesian aggregate supply curve as perfectly elastic. Perhaps a country is emerging from a recession. Aggregate supply can increase without there being any rise in the general price level. And then at this point, in this next little section, uh, diminishing returns might be setting in, and the amount of spare capacity in the economy, measured perhaps by the rate of unemployment, is falling. So therefore, costs are starting to rise. And eventually we get to the full capacity national level, uh, level of national output, where the elasticity of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve is zero. And at that level, we've reached full capacity national output. So what does this mean if we think about this shape of a Keynesian aggregate supply curve? Well, first of all, when demand is low, 81, for example, giving national income of Y1, uh, aggregate demand can increase to 82 without there being any major pressure on inflation. So it's possible to get non-inflationary economic growth as we move from Y1 to Y2. Uh, an outward shift in AD here can be met without an increase in the general price level because aggregate supply is highly elastic. However, when the economy is growing more strongly, perhaps reaching the uh, later points of an economic recovery or boom, an increase in aggregate demand here from 83 to 84 does cause quite significant upward pressure on prices. Yes, output can increase, but the economy is finding it harder to achieve those increases in output. And we see a rise in the general price level from GPL1 to GPL2, and of course this is sometimes known as demand pull inflation. Inflationary pressures from rising demand, producers feeling willing and able to increase their prices uh, to, uh, to increase their profit margins, for example. So once you get onto the inelastic portion of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, there is the risk of demand pull inflation. An outward shift in AD. Uh, causes a sharp rise in the general price level because the aggregate supply is now inelastic and in particular the output in the economy is getting close to full capacity levels. The vertical section of the Keynesian curve, the vertical section, corresponds, if you like, to the physical limit of the economy. So we, they've reached a full capacity output, you can't increase output at that point, YFC. So what helps to explain the Keynesian aggregate supply curve? Well, lots of factors. Critically, the amount of spare capacity is, is fundamental here. So when there is lots of spare capacity, for example, unemployment is high or businesses are working at half tilt, aggregate supply will be elastic. And an increase in AD can be met easily by increased production. There's little threat of, of inflation. But as you move through a cycle... As the economy recovers from a recession, moves into the boom phase, the amount of spare capacity declines, unemployment falls, for example. There's the possibility of diminishing returns in production. And also bottlenecks tend to appear in the supply of key inputs. Firms find it uh, uh, they may not get the skilled labour that they need, for example. There might be shortages of key raw materials and component parts. When an, the aggregate supply curve is perfectly inelastic, the economy is at full capacity. That's equivalent to being on the PPF boundary. And it means that further increases in aggregate demand are purely inflationary with little extra real output. Of course, you're hoping that over time the aggregate supply curve will shift outwards. This is an outward shift in Keynesian aggregate supply from AS1 to AS2. Uh, and that, uh, that, of course, is economic growth. How do we show a negative output gap using the Keynesian aggregate supply curve? Well, let's take a situation here initially with output of Y1. That's below full capacity. 
Let's assume there might be some recessionary effects, so maybe a fall in AD from AD1 to AD2. That causes a contraction of GDP to Y2. And now Y2, you can see that's quite a distance Distance A, B below full capacity. So that would be a widening of a negative output gap. And as a result, the economy is operating within its production possibility frontier. The economy is operating at a level of, out, of actual GDP uh, well below its capacity. So there we go, a quick look at the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. In another video, we'll take a look at what, the curve, what happens with the curve if there's an increase in short-run costs. Thanks for joining in. See you sometime soon.